Welcome to the deep dive. Just want to mention this analysis is powered by the fantastic research team over at Stock Analytics AI. If you want sharp insights like this, definitely like and subscribe to their YouTube channel. And for members, it's just $4.99 a month. That gets you uh, instant access to 500 deep dive videos covering the entire S&P 500. Plus, NASDAQ 100 coverage is launching next, which is huge. Oh, and members, if there's a stock you uncovered, just drop the ticker in the comments. All right, today we are diving into the, well, the wild ride of Rigetti Computing. Ticker is RGTI. We're looking specifically at where things stood at the market close on October 16th, 2025. And what a story. I mean, this stock, it was up over 6,000% at one point. Just incredible. But then yesterday, boom, the bottom fell out. RGTI dropped 15.7% in just one day. Closed at $47.49. So the big question for you, the listener, has to be, did the quantum computing bubble just pop? Yeah, that's exactly the question we should be asking right now. Because what we're seeing is, um, well, it's pure cognitive dissonance, isn't it? You've got this company with a huge $15.4 billion valuation. $15 billion. Right. But then you look at the revenue, trailing 12 months, just $7.9 million. It's tiny. And we're going to really unpack this central conflict today because you have analysts calling it a strong buy. Which sounds great. But, and this is the kicker, their average price target is 53% below the current share price. And definitely stick around because, well, what the CEO is doing with his own shares, it's probably the biggest red flag we uncovered. Okay, let's start from the ground up. Let's unpack the actual business. How does Rigetti even try to make money from, you know, the absolute bleeding edge of physics? This brings us straight into chapter one. Business analysis. Right. So they know the market's still uh, very young. So they've got this kind of dual approach. The main thing is QS key quantum computing as a service. QSAN, yes. Okay. Yeah. So clients think big companies, government labs, that sort of thing. They access Rigetti's quantum computers remotely, either through Rigetti's own QCS platform or, you know, through the big cloud players like Amazon Bracket and Microsoft Azure. Gotcha. So if you don't have your own, like, super cool quantum lab, you just rent time on theirs through the cloud. Makes sense. Uh -huh. What's the other part of their business then? That's Direct hardware sales. They actually sell whole quantum systems, like their nine qubit Novera QPU. They sell those straight to government's R&D labs. Okay, and that's where the revenue gets uh, lumpy, as you call and it. Extremely lumpy, yeah. Like, they just announced $5.7 million in purchase orders for just two of those Novera systems. Hang on. $5.7 million for two machines? That single deal, that's like, what, 72% of their entire revenue for the last year? which is only $7.9 million total. Wow. That really shows you how um, fragile that revenue stream is right now. Exactly. And their whole strategy kind of magnifies that risk. They use what they call a full stack approach, integrated. That even includes their own special quantum chip factory, uh, Fab One. Fab One. Okay, what's the upside of having their own factory? And what's the downside? Well, the pro is uh, total control, unmatched control, really. And they can iterate faster on their chip designs, their superconducting processors. That's a huge tech advantage. Right. But the con, it's brutal. Fab One is incredibly expensive to run, huge fixed costs. It just makes getting to profitability, well, really, really difficult. So they're seen as a pioneer, you know, mentioned alongside Google, IBM. Mm -hmm. But financially, there's just tiny in comparison. The whole bull case really hinges on this idea that the quantum market itself is going to explode, right? Yeah. Maybe hit $20 billion by 2032. That's the hope, yeah. A massive market wave lifting all boats. But Rigetti's caught in a tough spot, squeezed between the giants like Google and IBM who have way more money but use similar tech, mm -hmm. and these other pure play rivals like IonQ or D-Wave who are trying totally different, maybe disruptive quantum technologies. It's a competitive minefield. Okay, we've looked at the tech, the market, the strategy. Let's pivot now. Mm -hmm. Who is actually steering this uh, this volatile ship? Time for chapter two, wow. management evaluation. Yeah, the management change back in late 2022 was um, quite telling, I think. They switched from the founder, Dr. Chad Rigetti, who's the physicist, the science guy, to Dr. Subad Kulkarni. He's a veteran semiconductor exec, commercialization guy. Ah, so that signals a shift in focus um, from pure science towards what manufacturing and actually selling stuff. Exactly. Scale and commercialization became the clear priority. OK. And this leads us right to that um, that huge insider red flag you mentioned earlier. The public filings about the CEO's own stock or rather his lack of stock. It sounds pretty bad. It is. It's uh, pretty starts. The filings show that CEO Kulkarni sold his entire position, 1 million shares, sold them all back in May 2025. As of the latest filings, he owns zero shares in Rigetti. Zero. The CEO of a $15 billion company, supposedly changing the world, 
owns zero shares. I mean, is that lack of skin in the game normal for this kind of speculative tech stock, or is that just, wow? It's a major anomaly, a huge one. And it really raises serious questions about alignment, doesn't it? I mean, the person who presumably knows the most about the company's real prospects is choosing to completely cash out at these kinds of prices. That lack of personal belief, well, it has to make any outside investor pause and really question if this current valuation holds water. Yeah, that, that definitely tracks with how they spend money. You said it's basically like a huge publicly funded science experiment, spending nearly $50 million on R&D last year, bringing in only about $10 million revenue. Exactly. And the return on invested capital, the ROIC metric, it's uh, deep in the red, negative 13.67% for the trailing 12 months. From an accounting view, they're just destroying capital value right now. Okay, that really sets the scene for the numbers driving this crazy stock price volatility. Let's dig into Chapter 3, Financial Analysis. We've got that $15.4 billion market cap. But the revenue, and this is critical, it's actually declining, not growing. It went down from $13.1 million in 2022 to just $7.9 million TTM. That's the wrong direction. Definitely the wrong direction. And the losses. Oh, the losses are uh, catastrophic. The operating margin is negative 976.08% TTM, minus 976%. For every dollar they bring in, they're spending almost $10 just to operate. Wow. Okay, with that kind of burn rate, yeah. how are they still even operating? How long can this go on? Uh, that brings us to the, um, the lifeline, the balance sheet. That's the saving grace here. They have almost no long-term debt. Debt to equity is like 0 0.01, practically nothing. And crucially... Thanks to selling more stock recently, a $350 million equity offering, they have a huge pile of cash, $571.6 million. Okay, so that's the financial lifeline, that massive cash pile. That's it precisely. You look at their annual cash burn, maybe $60, $65 million a year. That cash hoard gives them a runway, an operational runway of more than three years. Three years, okay. That cash cushion is really the only thing, the only anchor tethering this huge valuation to any kind of reality right now. It buys them time to try and make the science work financially without facing immediate bankruptcy pressure. But the valuation metrics themselves are just completely untethered, right? Mm. You mentioned the price-to-sales ratio. Astronomical. It's 1,652 times sales, 1,652x. That's... I mean, a normal mature tech company might be 5x or 10x sales, maybe. Exactly. It's just off the charts. It's why, you know, if you try to do a standard discounted cash flow model, just for educational purposes, mm -hmm. trying to ground it in projected future cash flows, yeah. you end up with an intrinsic value estimate of maybe 400 four five fives per share, 54 cents. Ooh. That 99% gap between the model and the market price just confirms it. The market's treating Rigetti like a lottery ticket, elongated call option on the quantum future. It's ignoring the income statement completely and just focusing on that cash runway on the balance sheet. Okay, that's the stark financial picture. Right. Let's shift gears now. Let's move away from the fundamentals and look at the forces that are actually pushing the stock price around day to day. We move into chapter four, market sentiment. Yeah, and you have to start with what we call the analyst paradox. It's bizarre. The consensus rating from analysts is a strong buy. Okay, strong buy. Sounds positive. But their consensus 12-month price target is around $26.50. Wait, hold on. They say strong buy, but expect the price to drop by more than half, from $47 down to $26. How, how does that even make sense? How do we square that circle? It's a tough one to reconcile, isn't it? What it suggests is um, analysts believe deeply in the long-term story, the quantum potential, Rigetti's tech position. They buy the dream. They buy the dream, exactly. But they also recognize that the current stock price has just gotten way, way ahead of itself. It's dramatically overextended. So they're essentially betting on the revolution happening eventually. But they expect a massive correction first, a big drop to bring the valuation back towards Earth at least a bit. And that huge 15.7% drop yesterday really shows how shaky that narrative is, doesn't it? Mm. The stock had been flying high on news about like JP Morgan interest, Air Force contracts. Right, positive reinforcement. But then... Bang. Yeah. News outlets start talking about a quantum bubble. Skepticism creeps in and the narrative flips. The optimism just evaporated. And the technical chart confirms that vulnerability. It was ripe for a fall. How so? What are the technicals showing? Well, at $47.39, the stock price was almost 90% higher than its 50-day moving average. 90% higher. Wow. And nearly three times its 200-day moving average. When a speculative stock gets that stretched that far above its trends, it becomes incredibly sensitive to any bad news or just a shift in sentiment, like a taut rubber band ready to snap back. And the high short interest plays into that too, right? 
lots of people betting against it. Yeah, high short interest, 14.81% of the float. That shows strong bearish conviction, but it's a double-edged sword. It also provided the fuel for those massive short squeezes that helped drive the price up so parabolically in the first place. Okay, so to really get a handle on the conviction or lack thereof behind this price, hmm. we need to see who's actually putting their money where their mouth is, who's buying, who's selling. Let's turn to chapter five, ownership structure. Right, and you see this stark divide again. On one side, you have the institutions. Institutional ownership is pretty substantial, actually, 40.5%. And you saw heavy buying in Q2 2025 from big players, you know, Vanguard, BlackRock. So the big money, the supposedly smart money, they're buying into the long-term quantum story here. That's the bull argument from ownership, yes. Sophisticated capital is placing bets. Okay, but then what about the insiders, the people running the company? That's the complete opposite picture. Insider ownership is incredibly low, just 0.6%. Less than 1%. Yeah, and even more telling, Look at the recent activity over the last three months. Insiders sold 682,624 shares on the open market. Sold over half a million shares. And how many did they buy? Zero. They purchased zero shares. Wow. So let me get this straight. The big institutions are buying heavily. Uh -huh. But the insiders, the CEO, the executives, the people who know the most, mm -hmm. they are selling heavily and buying nothing. That's the profound divergence. That's the core conflict in the ownership structure right now. You have institutional smart money buying what the corporate insider money is practically falling over themselves to sell at these prices. It really forces you to question who has the better information or at least whose actions speak louder about the current valuation. And the rest. The majority is held by the public. Over 57% is retail, the general public which explains a lot of the extreme day-to-day -day volatility driven by headlines and sentiment shifts. Okay, we've seen the tech promise, the financial mess, the weird market signals, the owner divergence. Let's try and pull it all together. Let's summarize the key factors with chapter six, risk assessment, it's the right thought. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So on the plus side, the strengths, you've got their technological leadership, especially with that Fab One foundry, that's unique. And that fortress balance sheet, right? $571 million in cash, almost no debt. That's a huge strength. Plus their own multi-chip IP and opportunities. The market potential is just massive, could be trillions down the line. Getting government validation, like those Air Force contracts, is key. And potential adoption in big industries like finance or pharma. Absolutely, but then you flip the coin. The weaknesses are glaring. First, just dismal financial performance. That PS ratio of 1,652X is exhibit A, huge operating losses. Second, the extreme valuation risk we've been talking about, it's priced for perfection decades out. And third, that really concerning lack of insider financial commitment. The CEO owning zero shares just screams weakness. And the threats, they're existential really. Mm -hmm. Intense competition, not just from Google and IBM, but potentially from completely different quantum approaches. That's the risk of technological obsolescence. Right, what a superconducting quivets aren't the winning horse. Exactly. Then there's geopolitical risk. The stuff is sensitive, national security related, so export controls are a threat. And finally, just the macro environment. High interest rates, crushed evaluations of long duration, speculative assets like Rigetti. They're incredibly vulnerable there. All right. We've covered a lot of ground. Let's bring it all home for the listener. Chapter 7, Conclusion. Okay, so synthesizing all this, you just see this incredibly stark contrast. The bull case paints Rigetti as this tech pioneer, right? Got a unique edge with Fab One, a vital multi-year cash runway perfectly placed for a technology revolution that could change everything. The potential is undeniable. But the bear case sees it very differently, views it as a classic speculative instrument caught in a massive hype cycle, a valuation totally disconnected from its actual and declining financial results. And that view is strongly supported by the heavy insider selling. So that current share price, $47.49, it's basically floating on air, driven purely by story, the narrative, the sentiment, not the cash flow reality. Pretty much. My concluding thought is this. Rigetti's future path, its survival and potential success, it hinges entirely on one thing. Can they translate their science, the Fab One progress, the multi-chip stuff, into tangible financial results, actual revenue growth, shrinking losses? Can they do that before that three-year cash runway inevitably runs out? It is genuinely a race against time. So, bottom line for you listening, this stock is trading today on a narrative a story about the future. And yesterday, that story showed a pretty big crack. The market just gave everyone a sharp reminder that even when you're talking about quantum physics, gravity still applies to stock prices. Yeah, and maybe here's a final provocative thought for you to chew on. 
Given all the internal issues we discussed, the financials, the insider selling what single factor, if it changed tomorrow, would likely have the biggest immediate positive impact on Rigetti's stock price. Is it actually a breakthrough from their own Fab One? Or is it something completely external? Think about it. Is RGTI stock price right now more sensitive to its own quantum ship progress or to, say, the next announcement on interest rates from the Federal Reserve? Which lever matters more today? Hmm. Something to definitely think about. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Rigetti Computing. And remember, do like and subscribe to Stock Analytics AI for more insights. Mandated disclaimer. This analysis was generated by an AI system and is intended for educational purposes only. It should absolutely not be considered financial advice. Please always conduct your own thorough research or consult with a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions.